Okay, 8.4 determining wave speed. I, I like what we're about to get into here because it's a bit more concrete than the first few lessons were. We're really going to start using some formulas, getting some answers. I think that um, at this point it starts to make a lot of sense why we're, we're looking at what we were. So for instance, the stuff from 8.3 we're applying now. And the main thing we're, we're going to be applying is what's called the universal wave equation, which is this equation sorry, this equation V equals F lambda. I mentioned that on the last lesson. This is, in this whole unit, this is the main, the most important equation. And just to remind you, this comes from the fact that V is equal to lambda over T and T is equal to 1 over F, where T is our period and F is the frequency. So V equals F lambda, frequency times wavelength. And so this becomes really useful. The first problem says a harp string supports a wave with a wavelength of 2.3 meters and a frequency of 220 hertz. Calculate its wave, wave frequency, sorry, its wave speed. And we just use the equation V equals F lambda. So we've got 220 hertz and 2.3 meters. And that just gives us 506 meters per second. So that tells us how fast that wave is traveling through the air given its wavelength and its frequency. And that's exactly how these problems work. The next one says a trumpet produces a sound wave that is observed traveling at 350 meters per second with a frequency of 1046.5 hertz. Calculate the wavelength of the sound wave. All right, well, no problem. We have V equals F lambda. We have the frequency. Um, and we have the speed. So we want to find what lambda is, the wavelength. We rearrange this guy. Lambda is equal to V over F. And then we just go ahead and use that. Lambda, we've got our V, 350, divided by our F, 1046.5, and this gives us 0 0.33 meters. That's our wavelength. That's how long, physically, that's how long that wave is, how, how much distance it takes to repeat. Good. That's how we use that equation. Now, part two here, we have just a, a few pieces of information. We have factors that affect wave speed. So, the first thing that affects wave speed is rigidity. Um, so this is how rigid the medium is. So we'll say that um, the more stiff it is, more stiff or the more rigid, so we'll say more stiff equals faster wave. The wave will be faster. And that's just because the particles are more packed together. It means the wave can bump into the particles faster. It can transmit faster through that material. Okay, the next thing that affects um, wave speed is temperature, and specifically that's in gases. Oops, in gas. We would expect if, um, if something is being heated up, then the particles are all going to spread apart. It means that the particles aren't packed together as, as well, which means that they're not going to bump into each other as quickly, which means that if you heat it up, the, the wave should go slower, I think. That's actually the opposite of what happens in gases. So in a gas, in a gas, um, as the temperature goes up, as the temperature increases, the wave speed also increases. And that's because, as we said before, in gases, sound mostly travels by the particles actually moving. And the, the, the more heated up the gas is, the more the particles actually move, so they're able to transmit that energy faster. So it's just an interesting thing there. Now, we have a couple other things here. Um, when we're talking about strings, so this is linear density is when we're talking about um, in strings. So for instance, if you play the guitar or the violin or that sort of thing, then the linear density of that string is going to affect the wave speed. 
uh, linear de density, this is the mass per unit distance. This is the mass per unit distance. And we have an equation for this. So linear density is equal to mu, mu equals m over l, where mu is the linear density. Now remember, we've used mu before. We've used it to talk about friction. And this is just, it's unrelated to friction. It's just a, a new thing. So if we have a string that weighs one kilogram, well, one kilogram would be a really heavy string. If we had a string that weighs 10 grams, and it's a meter long, then the linear density, we would do 10 grams divided by one meter, and we could get how, um, how dense it is. Now this is useful, it's important for us, because the more dense it is, well, it's going to affect our wave speed. In the equation here, the speed of a wave on a string is V equals the square root of the tension force, Ft. Hang on, I'm just going to clean that up a bit. It's the square root of the tension force divided by our linear, linear density. So Ft over mu. And I'll just remind you, Ft is the tension force. So going back a bit to unit two, where we learned about tension. All right, we're going to put that all together now on this next problem. It says, on your class wave machine, you have a string of mass 350 grams and length 2.3 meters. You would like to send a wave along this string at a speed of 50 meters per second. So what must the tension of the string be? OK, well, we have V is equal to the square root of Ft over mu, which means that I can rearrange this guy to say that um, V squared is equal to Ft over mu, which says that Ft is equal to mu V squared. OK. Now the next piece we have here is that mu is equal to m over l. So we can put that all together to say that my ft is going to equal, um, let's see, we've got m v squared over l. So we're going to have um, my mass is 0 0.35. My V is 50, I want 50 meters per second squared, and I divide that by the length, 2.3 meters, and this gives me a final answer of 380 newtons. And that's what the tension should be. Okay, and so that is the lesson. That's how we do that sort of, um, that sort of calculation. And I think this lesson you should have a bit of fun with, because you can actually start calculating some cool things about our sound. All right, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.